viewers can all hear me. My name is Kieran. I'm the systems engineer for the UK, Ireland and Nordics for Netgear Business. I look after business products. Potentially may have joined us on something before, so we'll, we'll take a run through Bye Bye Bad Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm going to show you the agenda. This morning, we're very lucky. We are joined by Gary Newson our marketing manager of Northern Europe. And Gary's going to be talking us through some of the stuff that he's been doing around surveying, around Orbi, and some of that good stuff. Morning, Gary. Morning, Kira. How are you? Not too bad, buddy. Thank you for joining us. Everyone, do let me know if you can hear Gary. We are trying something new with two microphones. Pamela, I'll make you my point person on this one. If you can, if you can hear Gary, please let me know. Fantastic. Thank you, Felix, as well. Thank you, Pamela. So let's take a look at the agenda. This is what we're going to run through today. So we'll have an introduction, just a brief overview. I think we've pretty much covered it, to be fair. Take a look at the small business survey that Gary's been conducting, uh, what some of that means for Wi-Fi within your business. Obviously, there's going to be a product in there somewhere, so we're going to look at how Netgear Orbit Pro, which is a fantastic product, can help you. Uh, we're going to take a demo, so we're going to we'll log on. If you did join us on our last webinar, I do apologise. We, we got so carried over time, we did manage to complete the demo, but this day we definitely will. And then, like I said at the end, spare a little time for Q&A. So without further ado, Gary, I'm going to pass over to you to talk about what good Wi-Fi means to your continued business success. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to take some time today to share with you some survey results that we've worked on. So just before Christmas um, in 2018, we ran a survey of a thousand small businesses in the UK, um, really with the main objective to try and understand a, a, a few things. But number one, how, how important is Wi-Fi to small businesses and their success? Um, what they use it for, and then also what any common issues that they're finding with their Wi-Fi are. Um, we really wanted to, to sort of take the time to do this to get a better understanding of, of how we not only look at the market space for small business Wi-Fi, but also really try and provide a product and a solution that's going to ultimately resolve a lot of, it, of the issues that we found. Um, so we, we took some time to, to survey a thousand small businesses and by small businesses, we targeted businesses that were basically business owners with one to 50 employees we've started with on this survey. We may look to expand that to, to, to larger businesses as well, but for the time being, we've targeted one to 50 employees. So that just gives you a bit of scope as to who we targeted. Now, the first things that we sort of are, so the, the reason we've covered some of these stats up and we shared some of them already is really just to try and sort of preempt some of the conversation around. So if you've got any questions about this, guys, while we're going through, please ask. And then we'll try and come back to you with any responses that we can. So the first thing that we really wanted to understand is what what business owners felt and why good Wi-Fi was was important and whether they felt it was important, number one. So out of the out of the people that we actually surveyed, we had 60% of the people of, that we surveyed felt that, that actual having a good Wi-Fi connection was important for their business. That's a big number. That's it's a big, a big number. number. So six sixty percent tight and then Effectively, with that, they felt that actually Wi-Fi connection was, was important for customer retention. For that, 52% of them felt that actually by having and providing good Wi-Fi for customers, it actually kept them coming back. So it was good to keep customers there. So from our perspective, we now sort of build that base to understand that actually small businesses believe it is a critical part of their business model. I can understand that. How many places do you go where you're glued to your phone, to your laptop? Exactly. If you're, you're a cafe, a nail bar, anywhere that really offers is a service type model, you providing Wi-Fi now where you've got you're spending an elongated time in their business is important. Um, so we then wanted to understand why offering Wi-Fi to customers was important. So there were three main areas here. So there is improves customer service. And with that, 70 percent of the people surveyed believe that it improves customer service now that can be through providing better wi-fi so people connect through facebook doing things like reviews all of those types of things live on site but it also comes down to things like pos so basically point of sale where people connect and actually make purchase and we actually have a, a recent case study of one of the uh, one of our customers that uses it and they basically demonstrate that actually improved pos has helped them sell more products um, and we've we've got some case studies that we can share afterwards if anyone's interested in seeing those as well. Um, customer expectations. So 
out of the businesses service for, surveyed, 42% of those businesses believe it was based on customer expectation. Their clientele expect that they have good Wi-Fi. So when you look at it, it's now not even only based on what they believe is right for their business model. It's basically what their customers want and, and require Security. to actually improve their business. So that was that was really interesting as well. And then in terms of attracting new customers, 36% of the businesses surveyed believe that it actually attracts new customers. So being or unable to offer good Wi-Fi, it actually helps them bring new business so and new clients. So you think that's a lower number because the, the rest of the percentage believe that they should already have the Wi-Fi. Exactly, yeah, correct. So we then look at what the common problems are. Now, connection being too slow. 38% of the businesses surveyed believe their connection wasn't fast enough to provide good Wi-Fi. When we look at multiple devices connecting to their network and it causing an impact, now we know that places like cafes, more people have like, I mean, I don't know about you, Kieran, but I've got two mobile phones. I've got a laptop I take with me. Tablet. That's already three devices connected to a network if I'm going into a cafe or a bar or anywhere like that. And um, so, I mean, you multiply that by 20. More connections on that network make it more onus for the network to cope with it. So 34% believe that. Connection dropping off, so in stable network. 33% of the businesses surveyed believe that was a common issue that they had. So basically their network wasn't it there. It kept dropping off. They that couldn't could actually provide like it. Coverage. So stability of network's an issue. And then the last bit was coverage. So 18% believe their business isn't covered enough. So there'll be black spots in their business or areas where they don't receive Wi-Fi signal. So with that in mind, we, we, we then wanted to understand whether or not people realised that there may be or whether or not they even understood what mesh was. So I'm going to say now, in, in, if anyone's got an idea of what this number could be, ping it in the chat now. Um, I won't reveal it, but we'll give you five seconds for people to give it. So if you think of a percentage of people that sort of know mesh or don't know it, and let's check a number in. So how many mesh. people here don't know what mesh Wi-Fi is? So don't know. So we've got five, one, five percent come in. So how many people don't know what mesh Wi-Fi is? So out of the thousand businesses surveyed, I'll give you another couple of seconds if there's any. Sorry, I meant 95%. That's not a bad guess, 95%. 92. So we've got some good guesses coming in, guys. We'll give it another couple of seconds. I'm just conscious of our time and yours. 93. So I'm going to reveal it now. 88% of the businesses surveyed wow. didn't realise or don't know what mesh a mesh system is. So now, they could be losing out. Obviously, from our perspective and from Netgear, we're one of our... We offer quite a lot of products, but one of our main products is a business mesh Wi-Fi system. And what I'm going to do now is, based on on these results, it gives you a bit of a grounding for the rest of the presentation. But I'm going to hand back over to Kieran, who's going to talk you through how to find the right Wi-Fi solutions for small businesses and what to consider when making that decision. And then also give you a little bit of an insight and a walkthrough of, of, of our, our mesh system, which is Orbi Pro. So back over to you, Kieran. That's awesome. Thanks for having me. That was, I think we can all agree that's some, some pretty interesting stats there, Gary. Gary's going to run because he, he's got to get to, to another session. So we're going to thank you, Gary, for your time. I think that last stat especially, guys, we can probably agree that's 88% of those people didn't know what a Wi-Fi mesh system is. That's pretty interesting because when you think about that in, in respect to the product, that's potentially 88% of the people looking for Wi-Fi could even be buying the wrong product or the wrong sets of products or products that are not best suited to their environments. If I was to turn around and say to people, do you know what a Wi-Fi extender is, or do you know what power line adapter is? I would think that uh, the percentage would be higher. People would know more what that product is, and potentially not, or buying a, a product like that over a mesh system, where a mesh system would, would be better suited. So trouble-free access means a smooth running, business and happy staff we all know we're, we're all pretty tuned into our wi-fi i've said it before and you know, if i go to the bus stop outside my house it even has free wi-fi so you can access the bus and you can see the live timetable see where the bus is is it late is it on time when are they coming satisfied customers keep coming back if i know i can get on a good service i'm a traveling salesperson of sorts <laughs> Um, and I, I'm often in coffee shops, service stations. If I know there's a poor Wi-Fi experience, the chances are I'm probably not going to go there again because as somebody who travels and works, who needs to be online, those are some of the situations where I need Wi-Fi. I need to download my emails. I need to get on my laptop. I need to make calls, Skype calls, and so on. And we can all agree that a poor Wi-Fi or even a poor network experience when you're doing these things and you rely on, on network can cause a lot of frustration. 
and then the business who's getting the broadband not isn't necessarily getting the speed that they pay for and sometimes you don't know this and you can almost look at situations and blame people like the isp why am i not getting the 100 meg that i'm paying for people often don't realize well actually i'm not directly connected by a cable which is the the only way to guarantee maximum speed and when i'm connected over a wi-fi if i'm connected from a, a further distance speeds go down and, and the quality goes down of the line and potentially if i'm not using a solution that's giving me full coverage or potentially doesn't have the latest standards in wi-fi then again i'm not going to be getting or receiving that service that I might be paying for. So what do we need to do to make sure that the Wi-Fi is up to the job? So check the external service from the ISP and make sure that the business is getting the broadband speeds that it expects. The easiest way to do this is to use a laptop and to wire your laptop back to that router. So make sure you use a wire, turn off wireless to make sure that it's not using any type of wireless connectivity back to that router. And then go to somewhere like speedtest.net and you will be able to check the true speed that you are getting from your ISP. Then potentially if you are receiving low speeds, then it could be down to an ISP problem. If you are receiving speeds that are much higher than what you're receiving on your Wi-Fi, potentially now we're looking at a situation where the hardware is not able to offer you the benefit of the service that you're paying for. This could be a, a place where we start to look at upgrading equipment. Check the environment, the ceilings, insulation, cordless phones, microwaves, a lot of different devices can cause interference. Potentially putting your wireless router on top of a microwave may not be the best idea. Again, you could be looking at situations where you have multiple rooms. Often we have things like air conditioning ducts running across ceilings. If you have access points or wireless routers tucked up behind those types of infrastructure, that could potentially cause you damage. And again, multiple rooms, thick walls, insulation, all these things can cause a loss of signal or, or interference. So potentially we need maybe more than one router or better placement of, of routers. If it's old, potentially you are running on outdated standards. It's one of those often plug, play and forget type technologies, right? We put it in and we often don't have to think about it again because it's not something we have to configure multiple times. So now we could be looking at a technology that's outdated and not offering the speeds that our devices are capable of. So I could be back on a, an old wireless N solution when my phone is now wireless AC. There are many standard issues, Wi-Fi routers that are not suited to small business. So potentially I, I could get a, a router that does one flat network. And if I'm sitting in a, a coffee shop as a standard example, somewhere where I may have guest Wi-Fi, I could now have all my guests as well as my internal devices sitting on the same network, which is not ideal. I would also be able to provide visibility to anybody sitting on my network to any other device. And that could leave me open to things like man-in-the-middle attacks for people sitting on my Wi-Fi. It could also leave things like my tills that are often IP uh, network tills now. There are a lot of IP solutions that are working for, for small business in terms of providing payment. And those would all be visible. So there's a lot of problems associated with using standard-based ISP equipment. So now we need to think about what we do to choose the right type of Wi-Fi for our business. So we've got to think about how many users I'm using, the types of devices, the area that I need to cover for that Wi-Fi and the speeds that I need to provide. Does it need to be easy to install and manage? Do I need a segregation for guests? So do I want to provide a guest Wi-Fi, which is not always a need or necessity. Potentially I'm a closed off office or a small warehouse or so on, and there is no guests. Um, Again, do I need it? Do I need flexibility? Potentially, maybe my business is going to grow, my premises might expand. Does it need to look good? Does it need to be secure? You know, if I have a, an ISP router or a standard based router, would it be able to be removed? And a lot of network equipment, including routers, is not terribly cheap nowadays. You can run into hundreds of pounds um, in the high ends, up to you know thousands on Wi Fi and networking equipment for business. And again, would it be able to be removed? very easily, so you may need something that's secure. And I'm my space conscious, where do I want to mount it? Does it need to be sitting on the side table, on a counter, on a till, mounted on a wall, mounted on a ceiling? Where do I need to put that device? So we need to think about all these types of things and then go out to the market, look at the available products and decide which one is gonna be good for me. Now, Gary touched on the fact that 88% of people didn't know what mesh network was. So for those that don't know, 
uh, a mesh network is the ability to daisy chain satellites to routers uh, or router to create a single network. The way we do this is all over a wireless backhaul. Uh, so the control for one router, so that would remain as it would in, in a normal situation. You get ad hoc satellites that almost look like routers. Uh, and what those do is they connect back to the router in any kind of topology. So they can either connect directly back to the router or they can connect satellite to satellite to router. And again, there could be multiple hops for the satellite. And they will choose whichever one is the best route back to the router in terms of connectivity to provide a true mesh network. And this is going to enable you to cover large spaces, to do it with minimal impact to, to your environment in terms of running cables. But again, you can, uh, you can almost look at either a wireless mesh infrastructure, and you can even look at a wired mesh infrastructure in terms of what you do. But generally, we're, we're talking about wireless, which means no rip and replace, just a simple plug it in and play solution in terms of your deployment. So that teases up to introduce Orbi Pro. So Orbi Pro is Netgear Business's Wi-Fi mesh system. So there are, Orbi is in, in itself a family. So there are a few different versions of Orbi. Um, like I said, Orbi Pro is for business. You also get Orbi for home. Don't confuse the two. So, so they are different and they don't interoperate. So don't, don't ever interoperate the two. But we're talking today about or be pro for business. Now, as standard, it comes in a pack of two. You can buy it as a, as a router, and you can also buy add-on satellites. But it comes in a pack of two by, by normal. And what you'll get with that is your router and your satellite. Each one is rated to cover 2,500 square foot. Obviously, take this with a pinch of salt. Different environments and things like that can change. It could increase, it could decrease. So obviously, take that as a, as a rule of thumb. You can look, there's up to 10,000 square foot coverage with three additional satellites. We've actually increased this now. So you can actually have anything up to 10, around about 10 satellites is the advisory. Um, because when we do run this, the, we decrease the wireless backhaul. If you were running 10 in a 10 hop daisy chain, uh, you would from the, the last hop increase. But you can look at anywhere up to around 10 satellites. Uh, and we do, I believe, have a 10 pack either here or on its way. Um, so you can create some pretty large networks, uh, again, up to some, some pretty decent square foot coverage, which is great, again, if you're in places like warehouses where you need to cover large distances, or again, potentially you're in a business and you may be growing over time, you know, you don't have to replace that system. You only ever have to add to that system to get the coverage you need. And one of the great benefits about Orbi is with every satellite and with the router, you get four ports. So not only are you adding wireless coverage to your infrastructure, to your, your office, your warehouse, your coffee shop, your restaurant, your bar, you're also adding wireless switch ports anywhere. So if you're in multiple locations, you need switches, maybe you've got printers, maybe you've got extra devices, maybe you've got till, uh, it's not next to the router. You now have the ability to plug in wired devices to the satellites also. So if you were looking at up to 10 satellites, you would be creating 40 wireless switch ports uh, across your network. That's a pretty cool and pretty useful feature. Now, what Orbi Pro adds over something like Orbi, which is the home user device, is the industrial design. So it's designed for desktop, wall, and ceiling mounting. So as Orbi Pro sits, uh, sits on a desk, sits on a counter, it's potentially not what you want somebody made to, you know, these are, items that you're investing money in. We don't want people to have the ability to walk into your business, pick up that device and walk out. So with this, you are able to securely mount it either a wall or a ceiling mount. You can even use the mount and screw it into a surface. If you do want it on a counter, if you still want to make it secure, you can screw it into the surface. These have security screws, and now people won't be able to remove that. You've got multiple SSID support. So you have an administration network, you have an employee network, and you have a guest network. And you also have the ability to create a captive portal for your guests. You can put terms and conditions. You can also do time limiting access to the internet. And somewhere in a coffee shop or such, this is a pretty cool feature, um, even in a business, anywhere where you have some type of guest network, ability to have a splash page, put some information on there, put out your T's and C's, 
accounting websites or so on. And then you can also forward people across to your website afterwards. So as soon as they accept, they are straight away loaded onto your website. So we're looking at fast, dedicated wireless between router and satellite. Remember, multiple satellites now. There's no wires. These all operate on what we call a wireless backhaul, so they wirelessly connect together. If you do have wired infrastructure, you can run it on wired infrastructure and, and use cables and plug them in. So if you do have existing ports, uh, that's a pretty cool solution as well. You can use the Orbi app for setup. So there is a, an app for all Orbi solutions, be it home or business. You can use this app to create your Wi-Fi networks, to add your satellites, or board everyone to create everything within the network. So it's pretty easy to control. Like I said, we've got three separate SSIDs and get more than 100 meg internet over 5,000 to 10,000 square foot. We know we actually go past 10,000 square foot now with the ability to add many more satellites. These are what the no wires look like. So obviously we can see that you've got the ceiling mounts. See what it looks like. You've got the wall mounts. I like the wall mounts. I think that's a pretty cool idea. So in terms of setup, here's what you have to do. You've got to connect it to your modem or router. Now, if you're in a cable situation, so Orbi is what we would call a cable router. Um, so if you have something like Virgin, where they provide the modem, you can use uh, Netgear as a router, uh, turn off your Virgin, put it into something, put it into modem only mode, plug this in, this will take the public IP address. You can use Orbi just as an access point solution also. So if you do just need Wi-Fi, you need it meshed, you need the ability to cover large spaces or increase your coverage from what you've got, and you need better Wi-Fi than you have already, you can turn just the Wi-Fi off on your existing router, and you can use these as wireless access points that self-mesh together, which again is a pretty cool solution where maybe I don't need the routing functionality, I can turn my, my Orbi into just access point mode. And again, by that pack, I can start to create just a Wi-Fi system that blanket covers my environment. You know, you can use the, the Orbi app. If you are using something like BT or somewhere where they have a, a business router, you can sit it behind it uh, and it will just do double NAT as it passes out. Or again, potentially you can take their uh, business router out and look at something like a Netgear DM200 modem. Um, which will take your inbound DSL connection and then we can flip that out the other side straight into our Orbi again. So you, you do have the ability to remove those. So we know it scales pretty good. So again, this is based on a house, but imagine this could be an office, it could be a barbershop, it could be a restaurant, it could be anywhere, it could be a dentist, multiple floors. These have the ability to connect like this. Potentially, if the left-hand satellite was further on the right, again, we had more satellites anywhere in that, they could connect back to other satellites to hop back to the Orbi Pro router. So the distances that we can cover are, are fairly large now that we have the ability to truly mesh together. You can see that connects over there to my router, my modem, my gateway, and then everything connects back. Now, this is how we work. This is a big differentiator to uh, potentially what similar solutions do. Now, there aren't any real true like-for-like -like solutions in terms of business products. Um, but this is a big differentiator from Orbi as a general rule of thumb is how we connect back from router to satellite. So as you can see here, we have four lanes of traffic between that. Right, we have Wi-Fi networks, so we have 2.4 and 5 gig networks. We can put those as, as one network and the devices will connect to the capable five if they can, 2.4 if they can't. But the communication between router and satellite is done over a dedicated four quad stream 1733 megabit per second fast lane technology. And that is dedicated for that communication. So it's not the Wi-Fi that I connect on. And this is a, a big USB and a big differentiator between Corby and other similar type products. So no matter what happens, when I'm using the Wi-Fi on the satellite, I'm never taking away from the capability to send that data from the satellite back to the router where other solutions sometimes use the same Wi-Fi that you connect on 
to talk from router to satellite, which means the more you load up that satellite with devices, the, the more detrimental that would be back to my connection, as well as potentially not having as fast a backhaul between router and satellite. Now, the three separate networks that we have on there, so you've got the guest customer, the employee, and the admin. Now, the way these work are with true isolation and separation between those three networks. So there's no communication between any of them. So you've got the guest. Now, with the guest, we can have timed access. We can do our captive portal. For employee access, again, this is almost like a guest. Uh, but there's no uh, captive portal, and this really is for, for staff to connect to, to add devices, browse the internet. If I was to, to go and look in my office today uh, and look at everyone who's on the Wi-Fi infrastructure, I would guarantee you that 50% of the devices were not corporate devices, right? So again, by default, as staff and employees, we expect to, to have decent Wi-Fi service and coverage uh, and, and the ability to jump on and network on our own devices while we're in this place. Even if we don't, uh, and it's not meant for that purpose, users will find a way. So this is a, a secure network that doesn't access any infrastructure, shouldn't have any impact on it, will give them the ability to connect that to the internet. And then we have the admin manager network. Now this network is the one that oversees everything. Now with the wired ports on the Orbi, this is the one that gives you access to that. So this is where I'm going to plug things in, like my tools and my infrastructure. And from here, I'll be able to see and talk to those devices. So if I have wireless terminals for my till, and then I have a wire connection for the central part of that solution, again, that's where I wire it in. And then the wireless will connect back to the admin, manager will connect back to the admin, potentially staff who want to access internal systems will connect back to this network. And it's all separate between the three. Yeah. Now we have the ability to turn Wi-Fi into a tangible business asset. So we can improve staff connectivity, which is reliable, problem-free connectivity. Uh, mounting, again, don't underestimate the ability to mount access points or Wi-Fi solutions in different places or different ways. Uh, the way you mount your Wi-Fi can have a big impact on the delivery of that Wi-Fi over your environment. If I was to put it somewhere low when it needs to be high, if it needs to be on the ceiling, if it needs to be on water, create maximum coverage, all the options are available to you. And again, one of the biggest things is being able to benefit from better coverage past speeds for my return on investment and for my customers. You know, if I'm in retail, if I'm in hospitality, hotel, so on, the ability to provide a decent wireless infrastructure really is a must nowadays. I think if we all ask ourselves, we all work in the technology business, but it's not restricted to that. If we ask ourselves when we go to a hotel, for a conference, if we're at a coffee shop, if we're on the road, we'll all agree that Wi-Fi really nowadays is becoming a very, very big must. So that kind of takes us over to our questions. Before we look at the questions, I am just going to show you briefly what it looks like in terms of the solution itself. So I'm just going to pause this share and then I'm going to share my Orbi with you. If you do have questions, feel free to pop them in the chat window or, or pop them in the question window and I will answer them as soon as we get through this. We're, we're running pretty well for time today. So. If you do want to see anything particular on here, so hopefully you guys can see my Orbi page now. So this is my Orbi Pro, and I'm going to come to, to home first. So here you can see your, your general status. You've got your three networks. Let's see, I should have maybe blurred that. I might have to change my password in my office now. Uh, you've got your second network and you've got your guest network. Now, 
first two, this is for your employees. Do I want them to be able to see each other and access my local network? Yes or no, password. Wireless one, again, this is my administrative network. This sees everything, whether you like it or not. We want that one to have the ability to see everything. Then we have our guest network. So this is where I can enable it. I want local authentication, don't want Facebook Wi-Fi. I can put my Facebook page in. She is potentially good for retail or for hospitality type environments. Password, yes or no. When do I want my expiration? Anything up to, to 24 hours. I can customize my portal and put a logo on. So I potentially put our Netgear logo on. And then this is what you end up with. So again, this will optimize as per the device you're connecting on. So you could connect on a mobile and again, it will optimize to that size screen or again on a tablet or a laptop. So there are a few other different parts of functionality. So we do have speed tests provided in here. I have a hundred meg symmetrical line. Uh, so that's pretty decent speed. If I want to add satellites, it's pretty easy. I can come along, go in, go next. I can then start to load up my satellites, run through the wizard, add them on, sync them, press the sync button on any extra satellite and they will sync up. I'm gonna come back to home. Now I have two satellites on mine. So I've got my router and two satellites. I've got 18 devices on the network. So I have a standard Netgear satellite, but I also have a, a Netgear Orbi outdoor satellite. Now, because the Orbi Pro satellite is quite far away, this is actually using our mesh technology to hop back over five gig to the outdoor B. So you can see here what it's connected to. So because it's getting a stable, faster connection, it's piggybacking through the satellite back to the router, which is exactly how it should work. Now, Dolby is a great solution, especially again, where you're looking at outdoor environments, you don't want to run cables in terms of your network infrastructure. So now you can have coverage indoor and outdoor. And outdoor be, uh, and I call it outdoor be, it's called the, the Netgear Dolby Outdoor Satellite. Uh, but Outdoor Be, as I'm going to call it today, uh, works both not with just with Orbi Business, uh, Orbi Pro, also works with Orbi Home. Um, and that's a, a really great solution, especially when it comes up to summer and you have things like pub gardens, pub restaurants, potentially, or even in home, I want to provide home Wi-Fi or outdoor working spaces again. And you can see all your devices connected, how they're connected to all the different parts of your network, be it the router, the satellite, or outdoor be. So that's a, a brief view. Now you do have advanced settings, uh, same as you would expect. So I can see all the uh, different settings here. I have the ability to come in, uh, change my firmware. Again, you can do uh, all this kind of stuff in the app. Maybe I want to turn it into AP mode, which is what I'm in now because I have an existing router, but I can turn it into router mode. Some things will get disabled in terms of functionality if you do turn into AP mode because we're only operating as an access point. So here you can see things like UPnP, VPN and port forwarding. Those are functionality of a router firewall. So those device, those options are grayed out when you are in AP mode. But again, if you're in router mode, those be enabled to. If they're not, those are just things that you need to do on your existing file router if you need them. And again, to change it back, just click there and then apply. And in terms of how you set it up, Again, you would plug it in, it would get its address, you connect. The app is the easiest way to connect out to this thing, but again, you can use a laptop, connect to the Wi-Fi, and you receive the, the Orbi Pro system. There will be a username and password and a Wi-Fi already configured for you to connect to, printed on the front of the Orbi on a little sleeve that you can remove. Like I said, use the app, use a laptop, use a PC with wireless connectivity or wired into the back of the router. You can then connect, configure, Add my satellites. I just come to add my satellite, run through next. This activates the sync on the router. And I hit the sync button on the back of the satellite. They'll then connect together, and download their configurations. And then it's just a case of coming in and do this easily from home. Configure my three wireless networks. 
do I want my staff wired to be able to see anything? Yes or no, maybe I just want to keep it pure separated. Configure my guest portal and away I go. And that's my network setup. And again, I can configure that all from there. So that's a, a very quick overview. It's supposed to be quick because this is supposed to be almost a, a DIY Wi-Fi solution for business. There's no things like VLAN support in here. It is Mac layer two separation um, and how we, we do that so we keep it secure at layer two. So if we've got things like VLANs, we're looking at bigger solutions, things like our cloud Wi-Fi solutions or our controller-based Wi-Fi solutions. But if you are looking at simple Wi-Fi solutions for business, then this is the solution we're looking at. So I'm gonna flip back. Uh, I can see we've got a few questions in, so I'm gonna flip back out of this. Uh, back. Da, 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 da. So let's go and share back to the slides. All right, so let's take a look at the questions. So I'm gonna, gonna run through these. So what is the maximum number of satellites you could have? So there is no real limit in terms of hardware. There are recommendations. We don't really recommend going, if you're using a wireless backhaul, don't really recommend going above 10 satellites because each wireless backhaul then has to cooperate and talk to the wireless backhaul on the router. We don't want to start overloading that router uh, because if you are on the back of the wireless backhaul, again, that could be uh, causing you issues. Now, again, if you're just looking at it from a coverage situation, but you're not looking at masses of data, we're talking real high intensive networks, again, there is no real problem. Uh, because again, we're just looking at a coverage scenario and we connect back on five gigs so the speeds are fast. We will flip back to 2.4 gig if we detect that the five gig network is not strong enough to carry that signal back. But again, we kind of recommend as a, a maximum of 10. If you use a wired backhaul, um, this is a little bit better because again, we're not taking away from that wireless backhaul uh, and then you can really kind of, same kind of number, but you can increase. Um, because you've got that guaranteed gig connection back. But do remember, obviously, you, you are gonna have to connect to a switch to, to, work, to connect those back to the router. So again, remember that, that you are looking at a gig bottleneck in terms of your connection back up to the router. Uh, see another one around, so you still need power, which does not show in the pictures, true. Um, uh, a lot of these are, are mock-up pictures. Uh, or, or the wires are, are hidden, uh, but the devices are powered. So they are, they're not battery powered devices. Um, they are all powered devices. So you do need to plug them in. Now we did, uh, we have, we are looking at a, a PoE uh, version of this. Um, so there is a, an Orbi Pro satellite. Um, and again, potentially we'll look at that shortly. Um, so do remember you do need to uh, you do need to power these devices. Is this managed online by Netgear and what are the fees? So no, this is this is not managed uh, via the cloud. Um, so you have your local administration page or you have the app um, and you manage the device by that. Do you have the ability to set up a VPN? Um, back to that network. So you can log in remotely to the network by setting it up, but it's not managed online and, and there are no fees. Uh, it's not at the moment. No, there isn't, there isn't PoE support. So it is, it is meant for um, standard uh, plug-in power. A lot of that's based on the fact that we're not looking at connecting them over wires. We're, we're looking at wirelessly connecting them back. So we've kind of based a solution around that. But there are things going on kind of in that space. How do the satellites connect over 5G? So they connect back over a dedicated five gigahertz network. You can't see it, it's not visible to, to the users, so they can't connect to it. It is purely configured 
four routers and satellites to communicate that is dedicated for that communication. Any chance I can have a copy of the presentation? Of course. Uh, so we will send this out to everyone post webinar. So you will get a follow up email from Netgear with more information uh, and a copy of all the slides today. Are the devices waterproof and can they be mounted outside? No is the answer to that. The outdoor satellite is rated for outdoor use, so you can mount that outside, but not the indoor satellites. The standard satellites, no. Do we support roaming between the satellites? Yes, so we do support seamless roaming, um, which is one of the great advantages of, of Orbi. And Orbi Pro is once configured, you will get seamless roaming and handoff between routers and the different satellites. So if you're on something like a Skype call or a video call, you will be able to roam around that network and pass all the networks, uh, pass your connections off without disconnecting. Another one here, is it available to, to purchase today? Yes, so all of these things that we talked about today are available to purchase either from the channel or, or online or from any of your direct contacts. Uh, if you do have any more questions, we do have a little bit of time, so feel free to pop them in. Do any of the models have an inbuilt modem or do you require a bridge device? So the answer is no, there are no modems built into Orbi Pro. So if you don't have the ability to turn your existing router into modem only mode, um, you can either directly connect and double NAT. You could look at turning the Orbi Pro into access point mode, such as I do here. Or you can look at something like the Netgear DM uh, Delta Mic 200, uh, which is a, a really cheap and extremely popular uh, modem. We sell an awful lot of those um, because of their, their great features, price point, uh, functionality. And you can use one of those to replace your existing ISP DSL connection uh, and to pass off. Are the power supplies separate or built into the device? These are separate, so you do get uh, a separate power supply that, that plugs into the Orbi. Bottom back, and away you go. So, can I pair an Orbi outdoor with Orbi Pro? Yes, you can. Uh, there's nothing you need to, and will it have the same features as Orbi Pro? Yes. So regardless of what I configure, it pushes out to, to all my satellites. So I only ever configure it on my Orbi page and whatever satellites that are connected to my system will push out the exact same thing as any other satellite or the router itself. So much how I have here, I have my, my networks all pushing out from my router, my satellite, and my Orbi Pro, uh, my Orbi Outdoor, sorry. Uh, and it's all seamless roaming and it's the same features as everything else. How long are, are the PSU cables? It's a very good question. Um, I will have to go and measure those, but I will ensure to send out some information uh, along with, with everything that we send out, including the slides. We'll send some links to the data sheets and I will include a, a point to uh, show how long those cables are. So again, if you do have any more questions, feel free to, to ping them in. So we've got another question, you touched on PoE. So yeah, I did touch on PoE. Um, if anyone was out at CES, saw any coverage from CES uh, or, or read anything, we did announce at CES we are launching an Orbi Pro ceiling satellite. Um, and this is gonna be where 
along with the question for potentially where you're using PSU cables, uh, and that's not an ideal solution because you don't have PowerPoints or plugs in available places. And we know with things like Cat 5e, Cat 6, Cat 7, uh, we can run PoE for 100 meters, which can be pretty useful. Um, and again, you can use things like small PoE switches uh, to run those. You don't necessarily have to have cable infrastructure uh, or true cable infrastructure. Uh, potentially you could use PoE injectors. And that will be available. The Orbi Pro ceiling satellite will be available with PoE Plus on it. So you don't have to power it. As soon as that device is available, I will let you guys know. It's not available at the moment. We did launch it at CES uh, in 2019. Uh, so this year it was on display there. So do go out and search Orbi Pro ceiling satellite. Another one is Orbi Outdoor, a completely different product. So it is from the same product family, but yeah, it, it is a different product. It's not a completely different product. It's just a, an outdoor version of Orbi. Um, so it is from the same family, um, but with Orbi, like I said, Orbi is a, is a whole family of products. You have Orbi Pro, which is the Netgear business solution. You have standard Orbi, which is RBK50. Uh, that comes in multiple packages and there are even baby versions uh, of that things like the RBK40 and RBK30 which are, are slightly smaller or these for, for smaller environments or for, for less intensive in terms of bandwidth environments um, and an Orbi Outdoor will work with either Orbi Pro or things like RBK50 so it can be for home Orbi or it can be for business Orbi whichever one it works remember the intelligence is, is really happening in the router uh, and Orbi Outdoor will push out whatever you configure, be it on the home or on the business product. I'm using Orbi Pro here, uh, and I have my Outdoor Orbi uh, configured to work with my Orbi Pro. The setup is the same. I don't need to, to do anything in particular. Um, sync my devices, and away I go. Another one, why would we use Orbi instead of a wireless management solution? So it's a very good question. Now, not everywhere is, is really required or has a requirement for a true managed solution. If I think of something like a Netgear, either a cloud solution or uh, a controller-based solution, prices in terms of potential benefit to, to customers can run high. Uh, maybe I don't need VLANs. Maybe I don't need more than a couple. Maybe I don't have wired infrastructure. You know, if I think about my dentist, um, who, who doesn't really need cloud management, doesn't need somebody to, he doesn't need to manage it remotely, doesn't need to check anything, just wants a simple plug and play solution. Maybe he's got a couple of rooms, so he needs more than one, needs to be simple. This is the, the perfect type of solution for that environment. I buy my pack of, of router and satellite, plug it in, sync them up, add more satellites if I need more coverage, and away I go. So it's almost aimed at a, a different scale or different requirement and solutions. If you tell me, you know, I need multiple VLANs, I need tagging here, I need things on this, that, and the other, then we're gonna point you back towards potentially our cloud solution, Netgear Insight, we did a webinar on it, there's, there's some more stuff coming up, or we would look at a controller-based solution. Are you doing a training day on the Orbi products? Not at the moment, but if there is a requirement or if there people are uh, telling us that they'd like an open day, um, then absolutely, we can, we can have an open day um, and we can look at Orbi products and the Hawk Wi-Fi 6. So I think you're talking about the Nighthawk Wi-Fi 6 devices. And again, you know, look, if, if people say to us uh, at NetGear UK that we want to look at these open days, we want to come down and see stuff and there's a... There's a, a real use case for it, then absolutely we can we can hope an open day. Um, maybe we'll send it in a poll, post this to, to everyone that was on the webinar. And if there's a call for it, let us know what kind of things you want to see, what products you want us to show and talk about. And we will have that open day. So guys, look, we are now a few moments away from kind of using up our, our time. So if you do have any questions, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to end the Q&A now. Oh, I'll tell you what, are there any plans for AEDs? There are some devices um, out there. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll make a note to, to put something to that again. But I will put my details into 
the chat window. So that is me. So if you do have any questions, feel free to, to ping them across um, or feel free to contact Netgear UK and have a chat with us. Uh, so that's our number there. If you didn't get to answer anything again, please feel free to ping it across. If there's things you wanna see from us, if you wanna see webinars, if you wanna see demos, if you want open days at our office, do let us know uh, and we can look at those things. So I'm quickly gonna run you through this. What is, what is next uh, from Netgear UK? So we have our turning the theoretical benefits of AV over IP webinar coming up. So this can be on March the 7th at 10.30 AP. So if you do any type of AV, this is definitely something to look at. We truly believe that this is going to be the future of audio visual technology and how we send those, those transmissions and how the data is sent. We believe it's gonna kind of break out of the proprietary world and start to integrate with IP. There's a host of benefits of it. So do have a look if that's something you are into. Now, on the subject of open days, we do have two open days coming up. Uh, so we have on the 21st of February, uh, Insight Pro Open Day. So Insight is our Netgear cloud management system and infrastructure. It incorporates uh, our wireless, our switching, security and storage, all on our Insight Pro cloud platform. So we're going to have an open day. We'll, we'll talk about it, we'll demo it. There's, there's loads of cool stuff to come and see. So if that's of interest to you, please do sign up. We'll send out the registration links for sign up, it is free. Uh, spaces are filling up fast. So it, if it is something you wanna see, I would recommend uh, getting on there as quick as you can to make sure that you secure yourself a place. On the 13th of March, again, we're gonna be holding an open day based around AV. So this is gonna be our AV open day. This one, we're gonna be joined by ZV, who are a fantastic company who make all types of AV over IP products things like decoders, encoders, video walls. Uh, so we're gonna be joined by Rob Buddyman uh, of ZV, who's the European EMEA sales director. So he's coming down to, to join us. They'll have a whole host of kit. I'll be there, of course, I'll be talking on behalf of Netgear Business. And then we're also gonna have Matt Dodd of the SDVOE Alliance. If you don't know, the Software Defined Video Over Ethernet Alliance is an alliance of manufacturers based in all different parts of uh, AV and IP. So you've got guys like us from Netgear, you've got ZV, you have guys like Sony, Christie, all these guys in there to ensure interoperability between our products for AV over IP deployment. As part of that, even Netgear UK uh, and Netgear offices around the world have 4K video walls in here to demonstrate all this functionality. It's pretty cool stuff. We have a whole host of cool stuff. We have sound, 4K, we even have things like NVIDIA Shields, gaming, all this type of stuff connected to our system. So we'll be talking about it and demoing it in the office on 13th of March, 10 a.m. Again, it's an open day. It's a, it's a really relaxed day. So that will also be in there for you to sign up to. So again, that one again is, is nearly at full capacity. So if that's of interest to you, I would recommend popping along when the link comes across uh, in the follow-up email. We'll, we'll make sure to try and get that out today at the latest tomorrow. Uh, do sign up if it's of interest to you before that fills up and we close the registration. So that's what we're, we're looking at. There is one last question that I'm gonna answer. Do you sell time machines? Uh, not openly because nobody knows they exist yet. If you're referring to Apple, uh, we don't sell Apple products, we only sell Nikkei products. But if you're selling support for Apple Time Machine, uh, we do have that on our ready now storage devices. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. If it doesn't, I am out of time. So please do ping me uh, any follow up questions. Remember, I'm in the chat window. It's kpaddy.com or feel free to, to ring the UK office 01344458200. And the open days are correct on the 21st uh, and the 13th of March. And then there is a webinar, which is going to be on the 7th of March. So that's what we're looking at. We will be repeating stuff. And again, if there is stuff that you want to see or hear from us, then do let us know. Do give us feedback. Uh, and we will try to arrange stuff around that. So look, guys, thank you for joining us today. It is always very much appreciated. Do want to chat to us. The details are there. Reach out to us. So we're going to thank you for your time. Have a great day, great week, great month. Hopefully we'll, we'll see you on the next webinar. We'll see you on one of our open days. Enjoy the rest of your days and we'll catch you again soon, guys. Thank you very much.
Uh, just realized, guys, that I was sending my details only to Gary. So I'm just going to put those details back in there again. So, guys, if you do want to contact us, I'll leave that in there for a couple of seconds. Um, we are there. Those are our details. So 01344 458 200 and kpurdy at netgear.com. Cheers all.